This is Chapter 3, Control Volume Analysis, Part 6.1. I thought I'd do an extra solved example of conservation of linear momentum. This example of conservation of linear momentum is taken from a question on the makeup final exam uh, from 2017. What we have here is water flowing through a globe valve at a mass flow rate of 24 kilograms per second and the globe valve reduces the pressure from 53 uh, kilopascals gauge at the inlet to 35 kilopascals gauge at the outlet. So we have the inlet here at 1 and the outlet here at 2. The weight of the valve the pipe elbow and all of the water that's contained from 1 to 2 is 850 newtons. And what we're after here is calculating the forces in the x and y directions required to hold this valve and piping system in place. I should point out there's additional information on the diagram here. We're given the diameter of the pipe at the inlet and the diameter of the pipe at the outlet as well. As an aside, I thought I'd talk about what a globe valve is. A globe valve is a special type of valve uh, that's used for flow control in industrial piping systems. As shown in the diagram here on the left here, it could have a hand wheel to adjust the stem, uh, the seat position to adjust the flow, or it could have a, a pneumatic actuator activated with air pressure to allow for a remote control from a control room. And so this type of valve tends to have a very round globular body, uh, hence it's called a globe valve, as opposed to say a, a gate valve which would be used for sh completely shutting off the flow and isolating system components. Okay, back to the back to the problem at hand. Okay, the way you do this problem is you start by drawing a free body diagram. You want to draw as I've shown over here on the right, you want to draw the system of interest, which is the valve and the piping system, isolated in space and put all the forces on it. You want to work in symbolic form. You don't want to put numbers on this diagram. So after you've drawn the object isolated in space, you want to put all the unknown forces on uh, applied to this control volume. You want to put the unknown reaction forces, Rx and Ry, I've shown them here. These are the forces required to hold the system in place. You want to put the weight. You also want to put pressure forces and we have two pressure forces in this case. We have a pressure at the inlet and a pressure at the outlet. Now we've we've cut the system. This blue line is the control volume and remember from chapter 2 that pressure acts inward and normal to uh, those cut surfaces of the control surface. So P1A1 acts inward and P2A2 acts inward as well. It has nothing to do with the direction of flow. It's the fact that the pressure at those points, if you cut a part out like this and create a control volume, pressure acts inward on the control volume surfaces. And of course we want to work in gauge pressures. So you want to take all your pressures and convert them to gauges. And this reason was explained in a previous video that if you don't, you have to integrate the complicated uh, pressure distribution over the entire object, the absolute pressure. But if you subtract the atmospheric pressure, you can just consider the, the pressure forces at the locations where the gauge pressure is non-zero. And that greatly simplifies the problem. So now we can apply conservation of linear momentum. And in this case we have a control volume that has steady flow and the control volume has one inlet and one outlet. And so in this case we have the sum of the forces on the control volume equals the rate of momentum flowing out minus the rate of momentum flowing in. We only have one outlet and one inlet so it's going to be m2 dot v2 minus m1 dot v1. Now 
M1 and M2, we can see from continuity that uh, the mass flow rate at 1 and the mass flow rate at 2 have to be the same. So we're just going to call that M dot and we're going to uh, collect that term outside of brackets here. So I've collected that term and just called it the mass flow rate, which is 24 kilograms a second. And so we just end up with the sum of the forces equals M dot V2 minus V1. Now we have to remember, notice that those, these, these, the velocities and the force is bolded. This is a vector equation, so this is actually uh, more than one equation. I've rewritten it here. This is the vector equation. Sum of the forces equals m dot v2 minus v1. In two dimensions, this is two equations. You've got the sum of the forces in the x direction equals the rate of change uh, of momentum out minus in in the x direction. And then you've got the same thing in the y direction. In a three-dimensional problem, you would have uh, three equations here. And so you got to remember that the force vector is actually the force in the x direction, i unit vector plus the force in the y direction in the j direction. And similarly, the, the velocities here, we have the u component of velocity in the i direction and the v component of velocity in the j direction. So my advice here is to go one direction at a time. And I'm going to start with the x direction. And I've defined a positive x here as being to the right. And so if we take this equation here and we just consider the x component, we get the sum of the forces in the x direction equals m dot. Now we have the x component of velocity at the outlet minus the x component of velocity at the inlet. So that's just the, the x components of, of uh, the vector equation. So what are the sum of the forces? Well, we look at the forces on the diagram, and what do we get? Uh, we have the forces in the x direction. We have P1, A1 is acting in the positive x direction. Uh, weight is not. Weight's in the negative y. P2, A2 is in the negative y. The only other force we have in the x direction is our unknown Rx. So our sum of the forces is in the x direction are positive P1, A1, and positive Rx. They both act in the positive direction. And of course, we can set that equal to m dot U2 minus U1. We can further simplify this by noting that uh, the flow going out here has no x component. The flow going out of the system, out of this control volume, is going in the pure y direction. Uh, so there's no component in the x direction of velocity at the exit. So we can set u2 equal to 0. Now we can solve this equation for the reaction force that we want. And this is just solving that equation. Let me just check that. So we would, what's going to happen is we're going to get Yes, minus P1 A1 minus M dot U1. Okay, so before we start substituting numbers, let's think about this. Does this actually make sense? So the reaction force here has to balance this pressure force. So we can see if we only had the pressure force, that reaction force would have to be in the negative x direction. And the larger this pressure force P1A1, the more negative uh, Rx is going to be. So that term makes sense. Now in terms of momentum, we have x momentum in, right? There's momentum in the x direction coming in, but there's no momentum going out. So the x momentum is being destroyed. We're stopping the flow from moving in the x direction. And to stop the flow from moving in the x direction requires a force in the negative x direction. So that makes sense too. And so we can now move on and just substitute some numbers. So I've rewritten the equation here. Rx equals minus P1A1 minus m dot times U1, where U1's the velocity at the inlet to the piping system. So what do we know here? Well, we know P1 is, we've got P1 here. It's 53 kPa gauge. Uh, 
we've got the mass flow rate, 24 kilograms per second, so we need to calculate the area and the velocity. And they're pretty straightforward given that we have uh, the diameter here uh, at the inlet of 8 uh, centimeters. So now we can start doing some calculations. A1 is just going to be pi d1 squared upon 4, where d1 is this 8 centimeters. And when you multiply it out, you get 5.03 times 10 to the minus 3 meters squared. So that's A1. Now we just got to get the velocity here, the inlet velocity. We know that uh, m dot equals rho a u. So uh, we can solve for our unknown velocity here, u equals m dot upon rho a1. We have a1, we just calculated it, so we can calculate uh, the velocity at the inlet. m dot is 24 kilograms a second. The density of water is given in the problem statement. This is at 20 degrees C, 998 kilograms per meter cubed, and the area is 5.03 times 10 to the minus 3 meters squared. We just calculated that and if you check the units kilograms goes with kilograms and that makes that meters and we get meter per second so you can check the units balance we get 4.78 meters per second coming in so now we've got everything to apply this equation and that's what we're going to do next we're just going to make the substitutions uh, so this is P1 minus 53. Now don't forget it's kPa, so it's 10 to the 3 newtons per meter squared times area. This is a 1 that we just calculated, and you can see that meters squared cancels with meters squared, and we get force. That's what the reaction is. It's a force. And then we've got m dot u1. So m dot is 24 kilograms per second times u1 which is 4.78 meters per second and you can see this is a kilogram meter per second squared which from f equals ma is a newton and so we can calculate these two forces and we find not surprisingly that the reaction force in the x direction is negative meaning that it acts in the negative x direction so you can either write it this way or you can change the sign you can make it a positive 381 and put an arrow to indicate that it's acting to the left so that's the answer. So now all we've got to do is repeat this analysis in the uh, y direction. So here's our vector equation again. And this time I'm just going to take the y component of forces and the y component of the two velocity components. So v2 is the outlet component and v1 is the inlet component. So this time I'm going to just look at the y direction. My y positive y direction here is upwards and so our vector equation uh, in the y direction just taking out the y components becomes the sum of the forces in the y direction equals m dot and then the y component of velocity at the exit minus the y component of velocity at the inlet so now what are the forces that act in the y direction we've got to figure out this side over here well we've got the weight acting in the negative y direction we've got P2A2 acting in the negative y direction. Remember, it acts inward on the control volume. And we've got our unknown uh, reaction force uh, in the positive y direction. That's our positive uh, sign convention. And so the sum of the forces in the y direction becomes minus P2A2, the minus because it's acting in the negative y direction, minus W, again, it's acting in the negative y direction, and RY, which we've assigned as being positive y direction. And we can set all that equal to m dot v2 minus v1. Now once again there's a nice simplification. At the inlet here the flow comes in with no y component. So the inlet is at 1 and so we can set v1 equal to 0. And now again we can solve this equation. We're doing exactly as we did last time for an unknown uh, y component, our y reaction. So we solve for our y. Let me just check this. So P2 would come over. Yeah, and you're going to get P2A2 plus W plus uh, M times the velocity in the y direction at the exit. Now once again, before you make any number substitutions, you want to just 
check, does this sort of make logical sense? Well, let's look at the pressure force. P2, A2 acts downwards. So to balance that force, RY is going to act in the positive direction. So it makes sense that the bigger P2, A2 is, the bigger and the more positive RY is. So that term looks reasonable. Similarly, the bigger uh, the weight is, the more positive RY is going to be in the positive Y direction to balance it. And this last term, which is perhaps the most difficult to sort of rationalize, uh, here's my explanation. The flow comes in here with no Y momentum, but it goes out with a large Y momentum. So we're accelerating flow in the Y direction. To accelerate something in the Y direction requires a positive force in the Y direction. So that explains why this term is positive, this rate of change of momentum in the Y direction. So I would say, yes, that all makes sense logically. So now, once you've done your sort of sanity check on, on your equation, then you start substituting numbers. So here I've written the equation again. Ry equals P2A2 plus the weight plus m dot, and then the y component of velocity at the exit. And again, I'm going to go through this quickly because this is the same analysis we did last time. We know the area at the exit is 4 centimeters, so we can uh, calculate the area as pi times 4 centimeters squared divided by 4, that's A2. We're similarly going to use continuity again uh, to get the velocity at the exit. M dot equals rho A V2. So V2 equals M dot upon rho A2. We now know A2 here and we know the mass flow rate of 24 kilograms a second. So we can calculate V2 as 19.1 meters per second the same approach that we used as last time. So now we have everything in this equation. We have P2, we have A2, we have the weight, we know the mass flow rate, and we know V2. So we can make the final substitutions. Uh, P2 is 35 kilopascals. A2, there's the weight, and uh, M dot and V2. And you can see they all have units of newtons, and when you add them up, you get 1,350 newtons in the positive y direction. And so that's the answer. Now, I thought I'd uh, end by just talking about these reaction forces. These reaction forces, Rx and Ry, act at the flanges. Uh, Rx and Ry are the net forces required to hold the valve and piping uh, system in place. Now, I could have written them this way. I could have put two forces at each flange, Rx1, Rx2, Ry1, Ry2, uh, but that probably would have confused the problem. Instead, I just uh, summed them together and had a single Rx and a single Ry. But you should realize that uh, the Rx that we calculated of minus 381 newtons is the sum of the forces at the, uh, in the x direction at the two flanges. Similarly, Ry that we calculated of 1,350 newtons is the sum of those forces uh, at the two flanges. But linear momentum theory can only determine the total force. We it can't be used to determine those individual forces, so I, I thought, felt this was a better, uh, a more simplified way uh, to present the problem. So I hope that's clear, and that completes uh, this solution.